Assalamu alaikum everybody, this is your Arabic teacher Sam and a very very warm welcome back to the YouTube channel. Um, firstly, apologies for not creating any videos recently. Um, I've been focusing on my Sam of Somalia channel, which is like my personal channel, where I talk about my family, talk about religion, talk about culture, and, and of course the name Sam of Somalia comes from um, me doing Somali language lessons as well. For those of you who don't know, my wife's from Somalia, and um, I've been learning her language and stuff too, so that's where that channel gets its name from. So, um, but yeah, check that out. If you want to check out my personal channel, then you can go over to the Sam of Somalia channel and check that out. I'll link it up in the description, inshallah. But um, why have I got a makeshift office where I'm kneeling next to a bed with my laptop in front of me? So, so um, I was supposed to have a lesson I was supposed to be teaching um, a very good friend of mine, actually, Chris. Uh, big shout out to Chris. I was supposed to be teaching him, but um, we had an issue with his internet. So what I thought I'd do is instead of letting the time go to waste, is I'll just get a light, get one of my lights out, get my camera and the tripod out, and um, I'll just record what I was going to do for him. You know, so Chris, you won't miss out, inshallah, and um, hopefully the rest of the community will benefit from it as well. So we're just going to do a little walkthrough of um, something from uh, Qasas al-Nabiyyin, uh, the stories of the Prophets, and it's something from the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam. So we're just going to do a walkthrough of it. We're just going to pick apart some of the grammar, going to build us a bit of a vocab list from it as well. And hopefully, you know, whatever your level, you'll get some sort of benefit from it, inshallah. Um, yeah, so before we just get started, please forgive me for this being my, my studio. Hopefully you guys will forgive me for that, as long as the content is good. Then um, hopefully you forgive me for being a bit low budget today. Um, so we're going to crack on, inshallah. Um, we'll get stuck into this. So have a look at the screen, inshallah. Um, what is the title? Narun Baridatun. Narun Baridatun. So, um, yeah, so the word nar, the word nar just means fire. Yeah, the word nar. Um, it's actually, as we'll see here, it's actually a feminine word. You know, this is one of the few words um, which are feminine but don't have a tatmar bulta on the end. Another one is like um, the word harbun, which means war, is actually a feminine word with no tatmar bulta. You know, conventionally, the rule in Arabic is that if a word is feminine, it will have a term on water, or for nouns anyway. But, um, you know, there are some words like to do with nature and other stuff like that, like the word for the sea or the word for the wind. You know, th th those words are feminine, which is why the adjective that we have for it, baridatun, is feminine. Yeah, so fire and the word barid means cold. Um, yeah, barid. Um, so it's like cold fire or cool fire. Those of you who know the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam, you'll know what this is referring to. But those of you who don't, you'll find out. Very nice. So we begin with ijtama'a nasu. Ijtama'a nasu. So the verb ijtama'a is obviously from the root jama'a, which is generally to pull things together or to be together. Hence why we say yawmul jum'a for Friday is the day of people gathering. You know, the word jum'a doesn't mean Friday, it means gathering. You know, yawmul jum'a is the day when the, the you know, the, the, the Muslims go to the, go to the mosque for us to listen to the sermon. Um, you know, so ijtama'a is, you know, for a community of people to come together. Um, yeah, the word mujtama'a is like a, a society or a community or something, but ijtama'a nasu, the, the nas, and we can tell that it's the people doing it, that it's the subject, because a nasu has a dhamma, which means it's a subject. So the people came together, waqalu, and they said, you know, this is, this is kind of the third, pl third person plural, qalu, and that elif is silent. Um, yeah, there is a reason why the elif is silent, I'll explain it in another video, inshallah, but, um, وَقَالُوا And they said مَاذَا نَفْعَلُوا مَاذَا um, Yeah, it's just a, say, a way of saying what. Um, there are two different ways of saying what, really. You have مَاذَا when you're using it with verbs, and sometimes you can just say مَا when you're, when you're using it with nouns. Yeah, you can say مَا if it's after nouns. So an example of that would be um, uh, What is your name? مَاسْمُك مَاسْمُكَ you know, you don't say mother ismuka, you say mesmuk. Yeah, what is your name? You know, name is a noun. So um yeah, what is your name? Or um um what what's your opinion? Use it with things like that. Nefa'alu. The verb fa'ala yafa'alu just means to do something. But this noon at the beginning is how we know that it's we, right? The pronoun for we is nahnu. Nahnu. And, um, you know, and this, that's where the noon at the beginning comes from. What, li literally, what do we do? But, but that tense of verbs, when we say nafa'alu, we use the present tense verb, it, it can mean the future. Great. Okay, so what do we have next? Inna Ibrahima kasar al-asnama. So inna, you know, inna is actually a lesson in my, in my program. We have inna and her sisters. Because there are a group of words in Arabic which 
um, which they make the ism after it have a fatha on the end most of the time. Um, and that's why Ibrahim has a fatha on it. So inna Ibrahima, if we're going to say, and inna means indeed, by the way. It, it makes sense that the thing that we're talking about afterwards is what changes. Like if we say indeed, if we say indeed Allah, we say inna Allah, if we say indeed the house, inna al-bayta, you know, indeed the Qur'an, inna al-Qur'an, you know, that a on the end. It's because of inna. So, indeed, Ibrahim, kasara. You know, simple little verb, simple three letter verb, kasara, which means to break. Um, yeah, indeed, indeed, Ibrahim broke the idols. Um, yeah, al aslama are the idols. Uh, the singular is sanam. Sanamun is a, is a, yeah, it's the singular. Um, yeah, another word I think is azlam, azlam, and the singular zalama. Aslam, because um, I know I learned that when I was studying Arabic in Palestine, and um, people call each other zelame. Um, you know they, you know, yeah, they say zelame. It means like a man. They call, you, you call someone a zelame if you say, you know, hey zelame, this man. But it actually comes from the word for an idol or like a statue. It's strange, really. But but anyway, I digress. Okay, good. So Ibrahim broke the idols. Wa ahana, ahana. Uh, ahana is a verb. It means to insult. So wa ahana al alihata. So and he insulted al aliha. Aliha, um, aliha. I believe is the plural of just the word ilah, ilah, which just means a god, but god with a little g. Yeah, god with a little g. Uh, there's a difference in English uh, between god with a little g and god with a big g. God with a big G is Allah, you know, is like, is the one God, the one Allah. But when you say God with a small g, um, it can be, um, it can be like Hindu gods or statues or idols or goddesses and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So indeed, Abraham broke the idols and he insulted our gods. Good. Okay. وَسَأَلَ النَّاسُ And, and the people did a little bit of سَأَلَ. The, the people asked. You know, the verb سَأَلَ just means to ask a question. And the people asked. This is where we are. We've just, we've just talked about that bit. وَسَأَلَ النَّاسُ مَا عِقَابُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ مَا عِقَابُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ You know, this is a good demonstration of how I said that. When you use what with nouns, um, you know, you use ma. You know, so what? What is the عِقَاب? An عِقَاب is the, 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 the punishment. Um, yeah, عِقَاب, the word عَذَاب means a punishment as well. I'm not quite sure what the nuance is, but... Um, iqab is the, the punishment or the consequence for, for Ibrahim. This right here is an idafa as well, by the way. Um, Chris, I'm, I'm kind of speaking on a level that, that Chris knows, because Chris working through my course, um, Chris knows what an idafa is. But an idafa, essentially, for those of you who don't know, is just a possessive construction. If you're saying the something of something, the servant of Allah, the, the lord of the house, the, um, you know, the punishment of Ibrahim. And that further explains to us why Ibrahim has a fatah on it. You know, usually we see with the dafas that the owner, the thing that is owning something, has a kasra on it. So if we say the servant of Allah, we say Abdullahi. Or if we say the lord of the house, we say Rabbul Bayti. But um, there are some words, non-Arabic names, um, is, is, is one, of the, one of the categories that does this, that it can't take kasra. Um, you know, these words are called mamnu' min as sarf you might have heard of those before. Those of you who are doing my program, I think it's less than 48 or something. So um, I'll leave it quite late because it's just a little bit fiddly. Um, but anyway, that's why Ibrahim doesn't have a kasra. You can't say iqab or Ibrahimi. Um, you can never say Ibrahimi because Ibrahim is not an Arabic name. Um, it's a foreign name. Good. Ma jaza'u Ibrahima. So jaza, often when we, often when we, when it's used in the Quran, it means a reward. Um, what like what will they be rewarded with? Jazaahum Allah, like their their reward with Allah. But I guess it can be like the consequence. Um, yeah, it can be like yeah, it can be the consequence of something. Because in this case, it's not it's not a good thing. So what will be the consequence of Ibrahim? What what will be his punishment? And what will be his 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 punishment? How will how will he be rewarded for for what he's done? But reward not in a positive way. Kan al jawabu, kan al jawabu. So a, jaw a jawab just means a response, you know, it means an answer. So the answer was, and, and then when Allah puts these, when, when these are in, in this book, these kind of brackets, it's a verse from the Qur'an. Yeah, it's part of a verse from the Qur'an. So, حَرِّقُوهُ 
wansaru ya um uh, early hatakum we won't translate that um just because it's something from the quran so i'm just like even though i know the words i know what each of the words mean um we'll we'll, we'll pause over that inshallah and we'll just move on inshallah but it's to do with it's it's basically saying burn him you know harquhu means burn him uh, but the other bit i don't want to give any tafsir or anything cuz it's, it's not my place we'll, we'll carry on with the arabic language afterwards um good wa hakadha kana um hakadha kana so and hakadha is like kind of saying and like this and it was like this you know and it was like this awqadu come down to here awqadu naran so um um yeah the word the verb awqada it's a form four verb awqada um yeah awqada means um it means to to stoke or to fuel something um you know some of you might be familiar with in surah al-baqarah there's a time when allah says waqudu hannas wal hijara when allah's talking about um the hellfire as being fuel is men and stones yeah waqudu hannas and nasu wal hijara the nas and the hijara are the fuel for it but awqada means to actually to stoke a fire yourself or to start a fire awqada naran they they started a fire yeah wa alqaw fiha ibrahim um alqaw and they and they cast in it um yeah the verb alqa means to means to sort of cast or to um um yeah or to throw down yeah or to cast something into something yeah so so they so they threw in it alqaw fiha they threw into it a reminder as well the fiha this ha obviously is feminine because nar is feminine right it's referring back to the it's referring back to the nar um they threw in her yeah they threw in it into the fire what did they throw in ibrahim they threw ibrahim into the fire okay let's carry on walakin allah so i don't know if the author has done this on purpose but it's very nice that he has done walakin is one of the sisters of inna yeah walakin is a sister of inna so it's behaving in the same way so over here when we had inna ibrahima is why we have the fatha and then here we have walakin allah yeah cuz cuz walakin is one of the words that behaves like that but allah what did he do nasara ibrahima allah helped ibrahim yeah, the verb nasaraj means to help um and it's the verb also that's used up here in the in the ayah which i i didn't want to touch too much on yeah um yeah one suru um good nasara ibrahim and he helped ibrahim we can see the fatha on ibrahim shows us that ibrahim is not the one doing the helping it's the one who he's being helped we see that from the fatha so but allah helped ibrahim wa qala lin nar and he said li it's important this li is a preposition to to say to he told the fire and that's why there's a kasra on the end of nar whenever you use a preposition before something you know it puts a kasra on the end that's what's going on here so yeah linnari so yeah linnari to the fire if you're going to say to the masjid lil masjidi if you're going to say to the girl lil binti you know that's that's just one of the rules with prepositions he said to the fire um Again this is an aya again I I know what's being said here but I'm not going to give any tafsir or anything on it ya nar oh, oh the fire kunu kuni sorry bardan be, be cool kuni this e is again because nar is feminine kuni it would be kun if it was if it was to a masculine thing kuni bardan wa salaman ala ibrahim be be cool and 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 peaceful upon ibrahim um that's all we'll say about that um Yeah, let's just finish off this chapter for this lesson inshallah. How long have we been going for? Yeah, it's fine, it's fine. Okay. Um good. So um wa hakadha kana and it was like this. Kanat an-naru bardan wa salaman ala Ibrahim. You know, just a bit of repetition there. Um so it was like this. The fire was um yeah, kanat an-naru bardan. Lesson 10 in my curriculum by the way for those of you who are doing doing my curriculum. So the fire was cold you know the the way that we talked about inna um or wala kinna you know the 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 thing that you're talking about that allah has a fatha and and the thing which we call the news the khabar after it if we're going to say inna allah qawiyun we'd say inna allah qawiyun we'd have an a and then u 
but with kana we have u then a it's the opposite way around so that's why we have kana tinaru bardan wa salaman yeah the, the the fire was was cool and and peaceful upon ibrahim wa ra'a an-nasu anna an-nar la tadurru ibrahim so wa ra'a ra'a is perhaps the only proper irregular verb in the whole of the arabic language but um ra'a means to see something um and ra'a an-nasu and the people saw anna an-nar another example of an and then the word directly following it what we call the name of the, the name of anna the ism inna ism anna sorry um has fatha so and the people saw that indeed the fire la tadur the the word dur uh, means harm really so they saw that the, that the fire did not harm ibrahim that's everything for that little chapter um you know i think we covered a good amount in that um you know, which is really cool. Um, and Chris, I hope you appreciate that, inshallah. I hope that, I hope that works for you. I hope that's something you can watch, inshallah, until our next lesson so that we don't go for another week without without you benefiting anything. So um, so I know that I haven't published anything on this channel for a little while. As I say, I've just been busy with my other channel. But um, I'm back. Uh, but I'm changing things up a little bit on this channel. I'm, fo- I'm going to focus more on the podcast. Um, you know, for a number of reasons, just because it's 2018 and everyone listens to podcasts. And, um, and also I think I can, um, just help more people really. I know a lot of people are busy. A lot of you have kids and, um, a lot of you are working and whatever else. And it just means that I can make it a bit easier for you, inshallah. You can listen to my podcast in the car, you can listen to my podcast when you're at the gym or, you know, you're going to work, or whatever else. So that's what I'm going to be doubling down on. But more information is going to come out on that soon, probably tomorrow. I'm going to release more information about the Arabic with Sam podcast, but, um, Keep in touch with that. Make sure you watch it, inshallah. Make sure you listen to the podcast. And, um, you know, don't forget to comment if you have any comments about this video. And um, if you like the video, please help me out and like the video. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I really look forward to seeing you guys in further videos or you guys hearing me in further podcasts. Take it easy, guys. I hope you have a really nice day. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.